Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself of Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start off things with some very cool information as to what we're going to be expecting in the next Adrenaline update from AMD. And as with a lot of information about AMD focused products, well, we got this information thanks to a recent Linux driver patch. And basically what this patch implies is that AMD is preparing to add integer scaling into its graphics drivers. Now obviously we are expecting a big release in December and we're expecting numerous things to come alongside it. And if you check out the most recent um, feedback page on AMD, you can see that GPU-based integer scaling is a very requested feature. So it would make perfect sense for AMD to implement this if they can. Now for those of you wondering, okay, what exactly is integer scaling? It basically means that if you're playing, say, a pixel art game at a higher resolution, like say for example 1440p or even 4K, it will just look less kind of smeary. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. It just kind of looks blurry and unfocused at higher resolutions because just of the nature of the visual style that the developer has chosen and basically means that integer scaling sharpens up the visuals and basically just makes it look nicer for those of you playing on a higher resolution monitor. This has been something again that has been off requested so fingers crossed that it is coming but I'll be surprised to not see it given how popular it is, and of course the mention of it in the Linux driver as well. Um, but let's wait and see before we write this off as confirmed, but it's looking pretty likely. And that's not the only AMD thing I have for you today. The next up is regarding the RX 5500. So this is all thanks to a Reddit thread which was posted to the r slash AMD subreddit. And basically it's a bunch of marketing materials regarding the RX 5500 graphics card. So we see quite a bit here, you know, the target audience for it, a bunch of information about, you know, things like radial image sharpening, free sync, anti-lag, and obviously the adrenaline update as well. But we also can see stuff like a very nice performance sheet versus the GeForce GTX 1650 in both instances, as well as all the feature sets that we can see um, in terms of the quick reference for what we can expect in terms of specifications down to even like the amount of pins and stuff like that is shown here as well. So what can we actually glean from this, I hear you ask? Well, obviously it is going to be a Navi 14 based card. It has 22 RDNA compute units, which is 1408 stream processors. It has a 128 bit wide GDDR6 memory bus, which will either have four, either four or eight gigabytes of memory uh, running at a 14 Gbps data rate. And we do see the GPU clocks listed as 1670 megahertz and an 1845 megahertz boost. And we see 110 watts for the TDP and single 8 pin is deployed on the reference design, of course. What we might see on any ARB third party designs is a completely different matter entirely, but at least on the reference design we are just seeing a single pin here. Now there's something that's definitely missed by its absence. There is no mention on the slide that mentions, say for example, you know, the 5700 XT, 5700, 5500, 5500M, even the 560, 550, and um, so on and so forth. It had, makes no mention of an XT variant of the 5500. Now it doesn't mean, of course, that we will not be seeing this later on, but for now AMD are not comfortable, comfortable releasing even the name of it on a slide like this, because maybe there's some issues they're still wanting to iron out before they officially confirm it where we won't be getting an XT variant but it would certainly make sense for them to do so if they can but that obviously is a fairly big question mark in itself. So you can find the Reddit thread where this was discovered linked in the description below this video which in itself has a link to the source for this and um, it is actually still live at present and of course you have seen all the slides uh, shown in this particular video or the relevant ones anyway. Um, there's a slide for example that shows fairly helpfully at least for those of you who would be wanting to purchase the card potentially what each card would actually be good for like 4k gaming and so on and so forth and not surprisingly um, not many of the cards listed are being shown as being capable of that but still let's move on shall we to our next topic which is some bad news for Samsung so according to a report by Business Korea they are apparently dealing with some pretty serious defects in its foundry products Basically, according to the report, which you will find linked in the description below this video, 
The source of this was the use of contaminated equipment on one of their 8 inch um, eight inch wafer lines located in one of their plants. Now according to the official line from Samsung, the contaminated process has been cleaned up and prevented any further damage, but as you might expect, this sort of contamination can have some pretty serious ramifications. Obviously, if any of the foreign particles make their way onto the lithographic chip making process and it's only spotted in the final wafer, well, there could be hundreds of contaminated dyes. And Samsung estimates the recent damage as roughly millions of US dollars or billions of Korean won. But there is comments from an industry insider basically stating that the damage could be actually be far greater than these initial reports. They are saying that, quote, Samsung has not calculated the exact amount of damage yet, and the loss can be much larger than the company's estimate. Now, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with this one. We will not know the full extent of what's happened until the next round of financial reports. But obviously, Samsung are not going to be happy about eating the significant financial costs, you know, even if it is accurate what Samsung have said, you're still talking about millions of US dollars here. You know, while Samsung obviously had a lot of cash in the bank, they're not exactly going to be happy about spending millions of dollars when they didn't have to. But what's going to be more long-lasting for them, I feel, is going to be the damage to their reputation. And obviously, they've had their eyes on their top seat in this particular industry for some time, which at the moment, of course, is currently occupied by TSMC, and TSMC are struggling to keep up with the demand, as we've discussed, um, with 7nm at present, and obviously they're pretty much on track for uh, 5nm and even beyond that as well. So Samsung have been wanting to kind of take that throne for themselves, I'm not saying now it's impossible, but it's definitely made their job a lot harder, especially if their reputation is kind of soiled by this, but of course, again, this is a lot of speculation, but I'll be surprised if we don't see some fairly long-lasting effects for Samsung, and they might eventually um, take TSMC off the top spot, but it may take them longer, or it may just scupper the chance that they had. We'll, of course, just have to wait and see. So we're going to move on now from the tech portion of this video to a couple of pieces of gaming news, the first of which is regarding Death Stranding. So obviously we know that Death Stranding is coming to PC. We've known this for a while and it's now available for pre-order on both Steam and the Epic Games Store. Now understandably this has raised eyebrows and question marks and concern that we might see some ex you know timed exclusivity agreements going on with how aggressive Epic have been of getting their timed exclusives it's a valid concern to have but we will see both games sorry both versions of the game on PC come out at the same time so we're going to see Steam and Epic it's going to be available at the same time so no exclusivity nonsense to worry about there I figured that would probably be the case given that this is a Sony funded project but you can never know with these sorts of things. But let's finish up today's proceedings with a bit of an update regarding Overwatch and, of course, Blitzchung. Now, you obviously don't need me to tell you what this story is about, about the professional Hearthstone player who got suspended when he decided to send some pro Hong Kong messages during an official tournament, and obviously the response from Blizzard, which was to strip him of his prize money and, of course, ban him for an entire year, did not go down well. It has sparked a huge round of protests, some of which, of course, carried on to BlizzCon itself and is still following the company around like a bad smell, and to be honest, they, they deserve it. This was not the action they should have taken, as I've said before. Now, obviously, they have reduced the ban to half a year and have actually retained, sorry, returned the prize money to Blitzchung, which is great, but how Overwatch comes into this is Jeff Kaplan, who, of course, is Overwatch lead as well as company VP, and he's one of the longest running veterans of the company, it was among one of the original designers of World of Warcraft, and he actually touched on the topic of Blitzchunk suspension and when speaking to the Washington Post, and he basically is of the opinion that a reduction that the reduction that has happened is not enough. He said, quote, I was relieved when they reduced his suspension, and I think the sus suspension should be reduced more or eliminated, but that's just me. I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech. It's something that's very important to me. It got to me personally. I think the punishment was too harsh, and I was greatly relieved when they gave his money back. I think that was extremely important. I think, as individuals, we all have very different feelings about what happened in regards to Hearthstone Tournament and Blitzchung. There's a lot of very different reactions among us. We had to deal with a few bans in Season 1 of Overwatch in particular, and that process usually takes about 4 or 5 days to make the decision. There was always a group of us involved in deciding what the punishment 
punishment should be, and we would heavily devil's advocate every part of the decision. So I was actually shocked that such a harsh penalty was levied. Now, while he is fairly high up, well, very high up in the company, not fairly, very high up within the company, he probably doesn't really have much influence over the actual decision process in this. Obviously, he's Overwatch lead, not Hearthstone lead, and it goes a bit beyond Hearthstone, as I'm sure you can agree. But it is still nice for Jeff Kaplan to come out and say this, you know, I fully am in agreement that the punishment should not have happened, period. Um, fair enough say to him, you know, let's not talk about that sort of thing here, you know, people watch these sort of things to forget about, you know, the real world, politics, all that sort of thing. It's just got a bit of escapism is, is what these tournaments are about. And that that would be fair, but the, the you know the year suspension then reduced to six months and obviously the initial just complete taking away of his prize money was yikes and Blizzard's doubling down afterwards did not help, which is obviously why we are still seeing the pushback against the company. And there are definitely valid concerns about the future of their games, like Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, which they announced at BlizzCon as well. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed in this video. As always, your support is highly appreciated. I'll see you next time.